So friends, this is Elvis and his first girlfriend, Dixie Locke. Elvis was already out of school. He took her to her junior prom. This would have been May of 1955. And he actually missed a concert to come be with her and uh, go to the prom, which was held at the Peabody, by the way. It was also a double date with cousin Gene Smith and his date, Bessie Wolverton. And one last thing, Gladys helped her pick out her dress. Now let's talk to Dixie. So let's go back and start with, um, with how you met Elvis. You went to the, the church. Um, I was a member of First Assembly of God Church, and it had been since I was seven years old. And um, my family, all of my family went there and um, just was happy, small, poor Christian family. Um, my mom and dad, I had an older brother and three sisters. So um, we just were happy in the church. And then, you know, this very similar family from Tupelo moved to Memphis. And uh, they came to First Assembly mainly because of the Blackwood Brothers Quartet. The Blackwoods had been on the Arthur Godfrey Talent Scout show. That was way before um, America's Got Talent or The Voice. And they sang, uh, Have You Talked to the Man Upstairs? And they won the competition, which was unheard of for a gospel group on national television. So when Elvis heard on their announcement there that they were members of the First Assembly, that's what drew the Presley family to our church. And uh, we met there. We were in the same, being teenagers, we were in the same assembly group and uh, saw each other every Sunday. His mom and dad came to church as well. Um, my mom had lost a child pretty early in her life, as Miss Presley did, so they got to be good friends. We went a lot of times from our church to our home or to their home and had lunch together after Sunday services. Uh, so we were, we were just, we got real close, and uh, I introduced myself to Elvis at the skating rink one night, and uh, it, this is a crazy story, it's almost embarrassing to tell it, but he asked if he could take me home that night, which my girlfriends and I had ridden the bus out to Rainbow Skating Rink, and he asked if he could take me home, and I said, oh, well, I have to go call my mother and ask her, because I don't know if I can stay out that late, and um, I thought he would stay right there because he wasn't much on skating. He was kind of holding to the rail. <laughs> so I thought he would stay right there and wait for me, but he didn't. And uh, he followed me to the phone booth to call my mother. And I act like I was dialing and had this long conversation with my mother about staying and somebody was going to bring me home. And she said that was okay. And so I hung up and told him that my mother said that was okay. We didn't even have a telephone in our house at that time. <laughs> So I just made that whole thing up, and um, but he did take me home that night, and we went to a um, drive-in, I think it was Kay's restaurant down on Crump Boulevard, oh, Crump. Mm -hmm. and uh, we went down there and talked a long time. It was just so ironic how much we had in common with each other, with our family situation. He thought, because I lived in South Memphis, that I was kind of out of his class, and I said, are you kidding me? We live in a three-room house with seven people, you know, we're just like y'all. And so we just, we had so much in common, and uh, he took me home that night, and uh, uh, the next day I told my aunt and uncle who lived next door that I'd met this guy, and could I give them his phone, give him their phone number so he could call me. And she said that I could, so, uh, he called that number, and we made a date for the next Friday night. And when he came to pick me up, my mom and dad were there, and they said, I don't think y'all are going anywhere tonight. So they had just, they had seen him at church, but I hadn't dated anybody, really. So, uh, you know, and our, our, all of our guys wore Levi's and white T-shirts and tennis shoes or loafers, and he had on black dress pants and a black ducktail hairdo, and... Man, he was so different from all the other guys. So my mom said, I think y'all will stay home tonight. And I said, okay. I didn't care. So we stayed home, and my three sisters all fell in love with him that night. Uh, we played Monopoly or Dominoes or just acted silly and sat on the front porch. So everybody in my family felt the same way dying that I did. 
the first time they met him. So we were just, uh, there was hardly a day went by that we weren't together after that for a long time. <laughs> that would have been 1953. That was uh, late 53, early 54. Okay, so. I think he gave me his class ring. Uh, like the first or second week of 54, he gave me his Hume's class ring to wear. So we were going steady. And that was just before uh, he graduated. So he graduated he in graduated 53. 53. So, he, so that was after he graduated, yes. he gave you the class ring. He had already graduated. So it was still a thing even after he graduated. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. But you were still in school. You're slightly younger. I was still younger. in school, yeah. I was just... Two years younger? Almost 16. I was not quite 16 okay. when we started going together. So he was about three and a half years older than me, really. You know, one thing I heard, you have to understand, <laughs> of everybody here today, I'm the least knowledgeable. Because I was in Japan watching sumo when he was, <laughs> <laughs> but I did hear somebody say that Jerry E. Lewis, Jerry Lewis said something like, "You know, with this rock and roll, we're all going to go to, um, we're going to go to hell, you know, or you know, what, however he was teasing or whatever." And I was heard that instead of being a laughing matter, that really bothered Elvis. and said, don't ever say that again. Have you heard that story? No, no, but I'll tell you where that came from, I think. Uh, Jimmy Swaggart, who is Jerry Lee Lewis's cousin and Mickey Gilley's cousin. Uh -huh. And uh, Jer uh, Jimmy Swaggart was quite the pastor, still is, and has a huge following in uh, Louisiana. Uh, he he started that. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry? He he um, he started that. I think talking about you know. Well, you heard it so much when Elvis started singing. It was all the devil's music and all that stuff. And the young girls weren't supposed to listen to the music and causing all these weird scenes and all that. So uh, I I don't think Elvis ever felt that way about it. He just uh, I, I had said earlier. The first time his mother and I were standing in the wings watching him on stage perform, I was like, has that been in him all this time? You know, this shy guy. And it wasn't that he was so bashful at shy, but he had, as a young man, been kind of ridiculed for the way he dressed or being so poor. Um, you know, I remember putting a dollar's worth of gas in his old car and then having 50 cents to go to the movie on. So... Uh, to see that shy, bashful guy walk up on a stage and then perform like he did. And it was all him. You know, there was no, he didn't have an idol. He didn't see anybody do what he did. Nobody had been there before. It was just all out of his spirit that he did that. There was never anything in his heart that would be offensive to anybody. Um, when we were at church, a lot of times we would leave our church on Sunday night and go down to the black church over where they were singing and jumping and running and doing all these things. And man, Elvis was just right at home with that because he had seen a lot of that in Tupelo before he came to Memphis. So there was nothing vulgar about the way he moved to me. A young Christian girl, I was not offended by it, and I don't think any of the girls were. So that was all of a different generation that was trying to read something into that. To him, it was just keeping time with the music. Is he, um, uh, I've always thought of uh, Johnny Cash a little bit of a mystic. A mystic is somebody that kind of not just loves the Bible, but thinks in spiritual dimensions, curious, beyond even the Bible, you know, in terms of God and create. What Was he a mystic? You that? know, I, I don't believe that, that he was a mystic at all. He knew the Bible. Uh, he had been in Sunday school and in church most of his life. He knew scriptures that were important to him. Uh, seek the Lord's guidance in everything. He gives you direction. He sets a path before you. And even when you mess up, uh, you know, God has a best plan for you. But if you don't follow that best plan, he still has a good and a better, you know. So you're not hmm. wiped out. And, and I don't, I never knew Elvis to be any kind of mystic. He didn't need anything except the Bible. He was so, totally sold on the Word of God and did not know or talk about anything that would have been, that I would have considered mystical. 
Did uh, he, uh, do you know what his favorite book of the Bible was? Uh, I think probably Philippians. Uh, there were several scriptures in Philippians that he quoted. Um, Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Mm. He did that because that, I mean, and that was his nature. To If you're going to do it, do it, you know, well. And um, there was a lot of scriptures. I'm kind of blanking out right now, but a lot of scriptures about being kind to your fellow, person, fellow man. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a child, uh, as we were, he was taught the golden rule and the John 3.16 and the Beatitudes and those types of things. <clears throat> Excuse me, as a child. So. Where does generosity come from, do you think? Do you know, I think it was probably his generosity probably came from the fact that he was so poor when he was younger. And then when he finally started making some money off of his music, he was, he could not wait to share it with everybody. Uh, I think that was because of the way he was brought up because no one was there to share with him and it gave him such a good feeling. Uh, his mom and I used to laugh when he started touring that he always would bring us back a gift from wherever he had been and it was just he couldn't do enough for people. You can tell that from the way he treated the, his Memphis Mafia guys that hung out with him. Anything he bought for himself, he bought one for everybody. Okay. So I have a question. Okay. Um, and we talked about this before, but uh, I'd, I'd like for you to, to tell the story on camera. Okay. Um, Elvis attended your um, baptism. Mm -hmm. So did you ever see Elvis baptized? I did not see him baptized. And I, I don't really believe in my heart that he was baptized at First Assembly in Memphis. Um, my recollection is that he was baptized at the Tupelo First Assembly. Uh, a few years ago, an elderly man and his family moved to Memphis, and he had pastored that church in Tupelo, and he told some of my friends in our class there that he baptized Elvis in Tupelo. So, and I feel sure that that's probably true. His, he still has sons that come to our church, and they would verify that. So, I... Uh, I'm sure that he was not baptized at First Assembly Memphis. But you feel confident he was baptized? I feel sure that he was, yeah. Okay. I feel sure That's that a very was. important It piece, is, because, piece. you know, as Christians and young people, we talked about that with his parents and my parents, too. We, It was not unusual for us to sit and talk like this about scriptures in the Bible and plans that the Lord had for our lives and things like that. So that was not out of, out of the realm of conversation. Was there a particular place that Elvis would sit in the church. Did he, was he a back, I'm a back pew person. Are you? <laughs> yeah, you got some front pew people, you well, know. Well, uh, when we were younger, of course, we sat, uh, there was mainly the big main floor with a balcony across the back, but most of the young people, younger than us, sat up in the balcony. So we sat on the main floor. Uh, it was easier to get up and get out the back door to go over to Trig Avenue Baptist without the pastor seeing us get out. So we sat kind of close to the back during that time. Uh, after we moved to our new church over on uh, Highland, uh, when Elvis came two or three times, and he went up in the balcony to sit there. Um, in fact, one of our previous business administrators used to say when if we didn't make our offering that week, he was going to sell the seat that Elvis sat in in our choir, in our church. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs>